Okay, so we're looking at the Wikipedia page for Other Kin today. Hello, I'm your guide, Q, and we're just going to be taking this as seriously as we can. We're not, I'm not going to be like a douche here. I'm not going to be attacking anybody. I'm just trying to get informed on what Other Kin are, and I'm sure you're trying to do the same thing. It might be cringe. It might seem silly, but we're just going to read it as it is, and I might react to some of it as I see fit. So let's get into this. Other Kin are a subculture who socially and spiritually identify as not entirely human. Some other kin claim their identity is genetic, while others believe their identity derives from reincarnation, transspecies dysphoria of the soul, ancestry, or metaphor. Joseph P. Laycock considers the belief to be religious. I don't know who Joseph P. Laycock is. Why didn't you inform us on who that is? All right, so let me know if you guys are familiar with Joseph Laycock. I guess he's an assistant professor of religious studies at Texas State University. He's written a book called Vampires Today, The Truth About Modern Vampirism, and he's a blogger for Religion Dispatches. I guess it's a blogging website about religion and stuff like that, other topics as well. So I guess Laycock is somewhat of an authority on these subjects, but on the right you see a regular heptagram known as the Elven Star or the Fairy Star is used by some members of the other kin subculture as an identifier. So if you see this, it might be somebody trying to identify themselves as other kin. Other kin largely identify as mythical creatures with others identifying as creatures from fantasy or popular culture. Examples include angels, demons, dragons, goats, elves, fairies, sprites, aliens, and cartoon characters. Many other kin believe in the existence of a multitude of parallel universes, and their belief in the existence of supernatural or sapient non-human beings is grounded in that idea. With regard to their online communities, other kin largely function without formal authority structures, and mostly focus on support and information gathering, often dividing into more specific groups based on kin type. There are occasional offline gatherings, but the other kin network is mostly an online phenomenon. Some other kin claim to be especially empathetic and attuned to nature. Some state to be able to shapeshift mentally or astrally, meaning that they experience the sense of being in their particular form while not actually changing physically. The Therian and Vampire subcultures are related to the other kin community and are considered part of it by most other kin, but are culturally and historically distinct movements of their own, despite some overlap in membership. Okay, so Therians was something that came up. I understand the concept of people who think they're vampires, but Therians are individuals who believe or feel that they are non-human animals in a spiritual sense. There are also others who claim to have a psychological or neurobiological connection rather than a spiritual one to their creature of identification. Both often use the term species dysphoria to describe their feelings of disconnect from their human bodies and their underlying desire to live as their stated creature. So I'm finding it hard to, like, state my genuine thoughts and feelings on this because I'm a little bit overwhelmed by all of this information. I mean, I feel like my first thought is just that it would be difficult to live as other kin, as somebody who genuinely feels like they are other kin in society. It might make a little bit of sense. It might be easier if it's, like, a hobby where, like, sometimes you just astral project as your identified creature. But I don't know how you would exist on a daily basis with this. And since it is their identity, they must have to exist on a daily basis. So I'd really like to know what the day-to-day -day is like as an other kin, but let's get deeper into this for now. So here we are at the etymology, and that's just the origins of the term other kin. Other kin as an adjective was defined in the Middle English Dictionary 1981 as a different or an additional kind of, other kinds of. The earliest recorded use of the term otherkin in the context of a subculture appeared in July 1990 and the variant other kind was reported as early as April 1990. The word other kind was initially coined from the word elfin kind to refer to non-elf others who joined the communities. It's kind of interesting for me, at least, that other kind came out of elfin kind because I wanted to be Legolas so badly as a kid. I was like a huge Lord of the Rings nerd and I wanted to like dye my hair that beautiful color of blonde and grow it out and be cool like Legolas. But that doesn't really have anything to do with other kin. That's not the same thing. So now that we've looked at the origins of the term other kin, let's look at the actual history of the subculture itself. The other kin subculture grew out of the elven online communities of the early to mid 1990s. The oldest internet resource for other kin 
Kin is the Elvenkind Digest, a mailing list started in 1990 by a student at the University of Kentucky for elves and other interested observers. Also in the early 1990s, news groups such as alt.horror.werewolves and alt.fan.dragons on Usenet were initially created for fans of these creatures in the context of fantasy and horror literature and films, also developed followings of individuals who identified as mythological beings. This is some OG internet culture. I've never even heard of Usenet, so let me know if you guys are familiar with that out there. On February 6th, 1995, a document titled The Elven Nation Manifesto was posted to Usenet, including the groups Alt.Pagan and Alt.Magic. Enough people contacted the original author of the Elven Nation post in good faith for a planned mailing list to spin off from it. All right, so there's a lot that I don't understand in this next paragraph, but let's try and get through this together. Rich Dansky, who worked on the development of Changeling the Dreaming, said that after the games released, the Dark Fay L listserv had a rampaging debate over how the folks at White Wolf had gotten so much of their existence right. Adding, finally, one of the list members came to the obvious conclusion that we'd gotten it right because we ourselves were in fact changelings. Dansky denied being non-human. So after a little bit of further research, Changeling the Dreaming is obviously a game about changelings, and it's specifically about fairy souls who find their way into human bodies. So the other kin saw this and thought that, oh my god, this is so accurate to our existence that the creator of this game must be an other kin themselves, but the guy Rich Dansky claimed to not be other kin. So that's the story there. Are you guys at all surprised by how long other kin has been around? Like, obviously it hasn't been around that long in comparison to a lot of other things, and I identities in the world, but it is interesting that it's existed since the early 90s. I thought it was a more recent thing than that. So here's one of the things I'm most interested in, the reaction to other kin. Outside viewers may have varying opinions about people who identify as other kin, ranging from considering them animal-human relationship pioneers to psychologically dysfunctional. Reactions often range from disbelief to aggressive antagonism, especially online. Otherkin have been called one of the world's most bizarre subcultures, and a religious movement that, in some of its forms, largely only exists on the internet. Although Otherkin beliefs deviate from the definition of religion, they share the primary interest in the paranormal. Religion scholar Joseph P. Laycock, our buddy, argues that the Otherkin community serves existential and social functions commonly associated with religion, and regards it as an alternative nomos that sustains alternative ontologies. It has also been said that they represent present a widespread dissatisfaction with the modern world and that they have taken fairy lore out of its social context. So that seems to be a very short summary of the reaction because I feel like there's so much more reaction to this subculture than just what was stated here. There's no real reference in this article to the cringe community that has built up around other kins. I mean, there's like tons and tons of cringe compilations built around other kin on the internet, and people just love to cringe at how these people exist on a daily basis. Also, majorly important is the conflict between the LGBT plus community and other kin, because other kin want to be accepted under that umbrella of LGBT plus, but a lot of people in that community don't want other in there because they just think it's not the same thing it's somewhat it could be somewhat harmful to the trans acceptance movement to lump in this other kin movement where people are identifying as mythological creatures and animals when people are just trying to identify as the opposite gender i don't understand how gender comes into identifying as a creature but i guess that's what other kin are arguing so there's a lot to that so there's definitely worth making an entire video about i hope you guys are excited for that i hope you guys were interested by this stuff Let let me know if there's anything that I missed out on. If you want me to talk about the cringe culture around Otherkin, I'd be interested in getting into that. If you are at all interested in a more intimate Q-Star experience, I'll be streaming over on Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight at your Q, that's as in the Q that belongs to you. There will be a link in the description and probably one in the comments as well. So come hang out over there. I'm going to be playing RuneScape tonight. I'm going to try to have a more focused stream, but I'll also be heavily interacting with the chat as I always do. So if you want to tell me some stories, if you want to ask me some questions, for sure come out. I'm going to try to do my best job to make it entertaining and fun for you guys, get you guys involved as much as I can. So as always, skate on rollerbladers. I will see you tomorrow. I hope you are drinking enough water because it's definitely going to improve every facet of your life. It's going to make you a higher performance individual. Have a great day and I will see you tonight on Twitch or tomorrow with a new video.